Hey guys, welcome back to uh, part two of my DVD collection videos where I'll be showcasing uh, the next batch of uh, the season, my uh, DVD collection. So let's go ahead and jump right back into it. Uh, the next one I have is, of course, um, Child's Play 2. Gotta have all of them. Child's Play 2 is really, really great, especially the finale where Andy and um, Kyle are in the factory just surrounded by all the Chucky boxes. It's fucking great. It's fucking claustrophobic, and Chucky is a badass motherfucker on this. Don't fuck with the Chuck. It's a great one. Uh, the next one, which... Like, I remember waiting for this one to come out for, like, a while on DVD, and it was the only remaining Child's Play not out on DVD, so when it finally came out, I was like, finally, I can have them all lined up on my shelf, and that was uh, Child's Play 3. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this was released, like, I believe approximately, like, nine months after Child's Play 2, and, uh, you know, a lot of people shit on this one because, you know, it's obviously a rush job, but there's cool things about this. I mean, there's, you know, it takes place, you know... Um, at a military camp, and uh, Andy's now, like, 16, so he's obviously played by a different actor, but there's some really, really cool scenes, on, you know, in this film that, you know, make it a really fun flick to check out. Um, then, of course, the one that really, really, uh, kind of, uh, revitalized, uh, the franchise was uh, 1998's Bride of Chucky, which was uh, directed by Ronnie Yu, who would go on to direct 2003's Freddy vs. Jason. But this film's great. It's got Jennifer Tilly and John Ritter in it, and uh, an early role for Katherine Heigl, surprisingly. But, um, yeah, this film's really, really great. It has a great blend of uh, horror and comedy, and, uh, you know, at this point in the game, I mean, you kind of have to add, you know, noticeable humor in it for, you know, people to take, you know, uh, you know, walking, talking, killer doll seriously, and this film did it really, really great. This is one of the best in the franchise. Uh, and then, of course, the last and most recent film in it was um, the unrated edition of Seed of Chucky. Uh, I, I missed this movie in theaters, surprisingly enough, being such a huge Chucky fan, but I bought it the first day it came out on DVD, and I just really wasn't impressed with this one. This, the, you know, it just, they had stupid people in it, like, Red Man and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, I just didn't really enjoy this that much. But you know, don't worry because apparently Child's Play is on the fast track for a remake as well. Weird, who saw that one coming? Moving on, we have uh, a really, really early uh, DVD copy of 1984's Children of the Corn. Another solid, solid Stephen King adaptation. Uh, this is just so, so old, but um, yeah, I have this, and I just recently upgraded it to Blu-ray, because the Blu-ray edition was just so much better and has so many great special features, but this is an early DVD, and I believe this was really cheap when I bought it, so that uh, explains why I did that. Um, the next one I have, I found this in a Walmart in like the $5 bin. It's just something that I don't really see in stores that often, so I went ahead and bought it, and it's uh, Children of the uh, Corn 3 Urban Harvest. I don't have any other of the other sequels, but um, the only one not officially out on DVD is Children of the Corn 2, so I actually need to go about getting a bootleg of that movie, because, you know, I'm not going to watch this until I see part two, although some people have told me that it's not really necessary, but I don't, like, really like jumping around like that at all, so, uh, you know, I'm not going to watch this until I see part two, but it's cool to have. Uh, next one I have is a fun horror movie uh, starring Linda Blair, and it's the director's cut of The Chilling. Um, this is an interesting one, and I would just stress people to check it out for themselves without me explaining much, because I think it's just um, I think it's just a little bit more fun that way. But this is really cool, really cool uh, horror flick from the '80s. You know, you know, Linda Blair did some really, really quality stuff in the '80s that you know post The Exorcist. I mean, this film is one of them, um, as well as Savage Street, which. Uh, Savage Street, which is sadly out of print, but that movie's fucking killer, and uh, this is another great one for her. Um, next one is uh, another Johnny Depp film, uh, Chocolat. I actually saw this in theaters when it uh, was theatrically uh, released, and this is directed by Lasse Halstrom, so Depp was teaming back up with him, because uh, uh, this director actually worked with him in uh, 1993 and What's Eating Gilbert Grape, but um, yeah, this is an interesting one. I've actually seen this movie a handful of times, surprisingly, over the years. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. Great set design, actually. Uh, next one, 
I mentioned this one earlier when I was talking about Keith Gordon, and this is the special edition of Christine, another great uh, Stephen King adaptation. You see how Stephen King just kind of like all of his works get adapted into really great quality films for the most part, but this is another great one. Uh, John Carpenter did a really uh, you know great job on this one, and yes, you guessed it, this will definitely become a future Saturday Night Movie drive and review. I like this movie, so I would like to you know give you guys my thoughts on that one. Uh, next one I have is crucial, crucial holiday uh, watching around Christmas time, and that's the two-disc special edition of A Christmas Story. Again, the late Bob, uh, Bob Clark directed this one, and what more can you say about it? It's the perfect Christmas film. It's hysterical. It's on 24 hours a day on Christmas, and uh, yeah, I know every line in this movie, every single line. Probably watch it easily, like anywhere from four to six times straight through on Christmas alone, so it's it's fantastic. Next one I have is a great uh, cult classic film from the 80s, Chud, Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. And this is cool, it has uh, John Hurt and Daniel Stern, which is funny because this is an early 80s movie and they would end up uh, working you know, not exactly together on screen, but they would both appear in the 1990 classic film Home Alone. So that's cool to see that they actually had a working relationship, you know, years before the success of Home Alone. But this film's cool. Really a cool cult classic. Another one of my favorite um, Ron Howard films that was crazy, crazy underrated and just didn't do well at the box office in the summer of 2005 was um, the true story uh, Cinderella Man. And I bought this in, like, this really cool, like, collector's... Um, like hard, hard book, and this was great. This was a great Universal film, and uh, it's just a shame that like you know the uh, the uh, box office wasn't you know really high for this one because this is a great film. I think this ra you know ranks up there right up there with you know Rocky and Raging Bull as one of the best boxing dramas. This is a fantastic film, and uh, Russell Crowe did a you know phenomenal job. Um, the next one uh, currently at the time of this video. Um, I actually have this in my DVD player now. I'm going to start watching it tonight. I've had this for a while. I bought it at a convention, and it's from Blue Underground, and it's uh, City of the Living Dead, another um, another Fulci film, so I plan on watching that, but I've heard you know amazing things about it. It's just uh, you know criminal that I've had it on the shelf for so long, so I do plan on watching this. You know, Hopefully tonight we'll see. Um, next one I got was uh, the recent uh, re-release of uh, Clash of the Titans to tie in with uh, the 2010 remake. Uh, what can you say? This is a you know great gem from '81, and uh, Harryhausen's uh, stop motion effects are really really wonderful in this one. So uh, yeah, it was cool to get the new edition because I never had the original edition to start with. Um, next one I got cool, excellent cult classic film um, in a special edition with an early role from Michael J. Fox. Class of 1984. This is cool. Very interesting movie dealing with, you know, punks and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a really awesome film. I would really stress, uh, you know, checking this one out if you're into films like, um, you know, like The Warriors or Savage Streets or something like that. I, I feel like it's something in that vein. If you're, in, you know, if, that's, uh, if you're into those films, this is right up your alley. But, uh, yeah, I would like to review this one as well for Saturday Night Movie Drive. This is an interesting one. Uh, next one is the 10th anniversary edition of Clerks. This is a great film. I mean, you know, Kevin Smith is awesome, and, you know, being from Jersey, I mean, how do you not love, you know, Clerks? It's, like, kind of, uh, it's kind of hard to hate Clerks when you're from Jersey, and, I mean, I just, I just love the comedy in this one. I just, I think this is, like, probably Kevin Smith's best film. It's excellent. Um, that said, I also have, uh, the two-disc widescreen edition of Clerks 2, and this was great, too. I really enjoyed the hell out of this film as well, so, I mean, I think both of them are, you know, great, uh, you know, great compliments to one another, so this was a fun one. Uh, next one is the collector's edition of Close Encounters of the Third Kind. I haven't watched this movie in years, and, uh... I thought it was, like, a decent film when I saw it, but, you know, again, like, you know, similar to, like, the whole Scorsese and Casino thing, there's definitely, um, other Spielberg films that I definitely would favor, um, over Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Um, and the final one before I cut this video off, the 1995 teen classic, in my opinion, the whatever edition of Clueless. Excellent film. I just love this, you know, Alicia Silverstone, Paul Rudd, and of course, uh, the direction of Amy Heckerling, who gave us, uh, the 1980, um, classic Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This is just a great film. 
Well, I'm going to cut off part two of my DVD collection video of the C's right here, so tune in to part three to see more of my C's in the collection. Thanks again for tuning in, guys.